I'd like to say to the courts that Shannon, Bella, and Nico love and caring people. They love life. They love being around people who love them. They also, they always had good times. This is the first time they went to the beach this year and they loved it. But God only knows what happened that night. Life will never be the same without Shannon, Bella, and Celeste and Nico. Had all their lives to live, they were taken by a heartless one. This is the heartless one, the evil monster, who dare you take the lives of my daughter Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. I trusted you to take care of them, not kill them. And they also trusted you, the heartless monster, and then you take them out like trash. You disgust me. They were loving and caring people. You may have taken their bodies from me, but you will never take the love they had for me. They loved us more than you will ever know because you know what love, you don't know what love is because if you did, you would not have killed them. You monster, thought you would get away with this. I don't know how, the cameras do not lie. You carry them out like trash of the house. Yes, I seen the videotape. You buried my, my daughter Shannon and, and Nico in a shallow grave, and then you put Bella and Celeste in huge containers of crude oil. You heartless monster, you have you have to live with this vision every day of your life, and I hope you see that every time you close your eyes at night. Oh, I forgot, you have no heart or feelings or love. Let me tell you something, I will think of them every day of my life, and I love them every day of my life. Prison is too good for you. This, this is hard to say, but may God have mercy on your soul. I hope you enjoy your new life. It's nothing like the one you had out here. May the courts have no mercy on you. It's hard every day. It hurts in so many ways. I have read, heard people say that you're not a monster. No, you are not. You're an evil monster. Thank you. Love you, Shannon, Bella, and Nico. Love you, Pop Up and Dad. And one other thing, and Shannon says, she is super excited for justice today. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. The past three months, I barely slept because I've been going through a lot of different emotions because I, didn't, I did not see this coming. You went from being my brother, my sister's protector, one of the most loved people in my family to someone I will spend the rest of my life trying to understand. What gave you the right to put your hands on a woman, let alone my best friend, my beloved sister, your daughters and your son. Why weren't they enough for you? In the blink of an eye, you took away my whole world, the people that mattered to me the most. Everything in my life I loved, your children. They trusted you, they loved you. They looked up to you because you promised to keep them safe. Instead, you turned on your family. My blood is boiling as I write these last words because they are the last you will ever hear from me. I can't even think of the right words to describe the betrayal and the hate I feel. And to be honest, you aren't even worth the time and effort it takes to put my pen to this paper. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't cry for my family. They were my whole world. All I do is ask myself why. Why would you do this? You don't deserve to be called a man. What kind of person slaughters the people that love them the most? Did you really think you would get away with this? Did you really think that this was your best option? To throw away your family like they were garbage? They deserve better and you know it. I hope you spend the rest of your life staring at the ceiling every night, being haunted by what you've done. None of us deserve this. Hearing my mother and father cry themselves to sleep in this hotel room causes me anguish that is beyond words. I can't describe how this feels, how badly my heart is breaking for my poor parents. We trusted you. You have taken away my family from this earth, but you can never take them from my heart. You took away my privilege of being an uncle to the most precious little girls I've ever known. I will never hear the words Uncle Frankie again, but you will never be called Dad again either. 
You'll never be able to put your hands on another woman, let alone my best friend, my beloved sister, and your son. I just can't comprehend how they weren't enough for you. Shanann, Bella, and Cece loved you more than anyone. You were their hero. How could you destroy the people who loved them the most? I pray that you never have a moment's peace or a good night's rest in the cage you'll spend every day of your life in. A cage you are privileged to live in because my family isn't evil like you. We beg the district attorney to spare your life despite, because despite everything, we believe that no one has the right to take the life of another, even, so, even someone like you. I feel sorry for your family. I know the pain that they must feel knowing that they can't hug you because that's how my mother, father, and I feel every time we cry for our family. Nothing hurts more than watching or hearing my family weep for their loved ones. I just wish that I could tell the, that you would tell the truth, but I know that that is asking for more than you are capable of. I stayed up all night writing this statement. I don't sleep because of you. My life will never be the same because of you, but at least my conscience is clear. I get to live free, but I can't say the same for you. I haven't slept in two days because I've been anxiously waiting for this moment, the moment I get to tell you how I feel how this has affected my family and I. My family and I can finally grieve after today. If anything, we will come out of this stronger today than we were before, and we will continue to pray for your family. Sincerely, Frankie Russo. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you for this moment. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has prayed for our beloved family who had sent gifts, cards to us from all over the world. I know God will put the evil people where they need to be. I also want to take the time to thank the town of Frederick, um, Greeley, uh, FBI, the DA's office, the CBI, for exceptional work. We thank Nicole um, Atkinson, um, Shannon's neighbor, Nathan, and his family. Um, to me, they're our heroes. They really... They really are. God bless. Um, God makes no mistakes on who he puts in your life. Marriage is about love, trust, and friendship and unity. We marry for sickness and health to death do us part. Our daughter Shannon loved you with all of her heart. Your children loved you to the moon and back. Shannon's family was her world. Shannon put a crown on your head. But unfortunately, the day that you took their life, God removed that crown. We loved you like a son. We trusted you. Your faithful wife trusted you. Your children adored you. And they also trusted you. Your daughter, Bella Marie, sang a song proudly. And I don't know if you got to see it, but it was, Daddy, you're my hero. I have no idea who gave you the right to take their lives. But I know God and his mighty angels were there at that moment to bring them home to paradise. God gives us free will. So not only did you take the family of four, your family of four, you took your own life. I want the world to know that our daughter and her children were so loved by us. They will always be protected by God and his mighty angels. I didn't want death for you because that's not my right. Your life is between you and God now, and I pray that he has mercy for you. From Shannon's mother, Bella Marie, Celeste Catherine, and Nico Lees, Nana. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm Cindy Watts. Ron Watson, thank you. And I have authorized you to make a statement to the court as paternal grandparents uh, of the children. Uh, and if you choose not to make a statement, but your designee, Ms. Powers, chooses to, she can do so as well. How would you like to proceed can today? Can I read that? Um, can't do it yet. It's almost done. Someone needs to start that. I would like to read Who's going to be speaking today? Your Honor, initially, um, They've asked me, and they're hoping that they have the strength to speak. But if they do not, they've written out their statements and asked me to finish for them. So that would be, that would be fine. Who would like to go first? If I could start, Your Honor. On behalf of the Watts, Your Honor, and to the community, we thank you for the opportunity and the recognition under the Victim Bill of Rights. 
we come today of the grandparents and the parent of the daughter and children whose life was taken in this case. We are not here to ask for leniency. We are not in any way condoning or tolerating the, the crime that has occurred and the pain that has been caused. We join in our daughter-in-law and grandchildren's family in saying this should never have happened. This is not condonable. This is something that we will never get over. We appreciate the consideration that everyone has paid, most especially the families that have lost everyone. We appreciate that they begged for Christopher's life. We agree and echo what they have said, that it is not his place to take anyone's life, nor would it be our place as a community to take his life. So we thank you for the opportunity and for every consideration and effort that's been put out. The prosecution in this case has in fact respected the Victim Bill of Rights. They took the time to explain that the information that my clients had at the time that they were interviewed was not correct. They were misinformed, they were searching for answers, they were not intending to cause any pain to anyone, and they appreciate that the prosecution answered their questions and gave them the time and the respect and the consideration so that they could tell this court and everyone in this community that the interview content was not their message, that they accept that their son has done this, that they accept that he chose to plead guilty, that he sought and requested their consent and agreement for a life sentence. They appreciate that he is given the opportunity to serve that life sentence. It is his responsibility, it is his sentence, and it is not enough to make up for what has done. We understand and we join the family in that we have questions. We don't know how such a thing could possibly happen or that a man that was responsible for raising his children and protecting his wife would take the steps that he did and that he would disregard their bodies and the love that he had for them and they had for him and everyone else and take the gestures and put this community through the investigation and the discovery and the responsibility of bringing justice. We do not understand that. We do not think it was appropriate. We cannot begin to think that an explanation will ever justify it. My clients indicate that they understand that a full opportunity for a confession with all of the responsibility and accountability has not occurred and they support the family and the request that that happen, if not today, at an appropriate time, in an appropriate manner, so that everyone can have peace, to understand to the best of their ability the details that they need and to have their questions answered. And by giving this opportunity of a life sentence, we hope that he t embraces that moment, that had the death penalty been pursued, there would not have been an opportunity to be accountable and to give a full confession. And had the death penalty been sought, counsel would have fought for his life, the prosecutors would have been engaged in a multiple year battle, the families would have been torn apart, this community would have had to subsidize it and endure it, and we have so much respect and gratefulness that that did not happen. We would strongly encourage Christopher Watts to give that full confession in the tone and in the timing that he thinks is appropriate with the guidance of his counsel. We feel that it would be appropriate and helpful to ease the pain and the suffering. But we also say we don't think that there's anything that he can say that will ever account for his behavior. There's nothing that can be done to cure the harm he has caused. And he has the responsibility to serve his sentence with dignity and with regard for everyone and to spend every breath that he has left in an atonement for what he has done. Do you want to read it? Yes. I'd like to have you state your name for the record. Cindy Watts. Thank you. My name is Cindy Watts. I am the grandmother of two beautiful granddaughters, Bella Marie, Celeste Catherine Watts. I am also the mother of Christopher Watts 
who I will be directing most of my statement to. First, I'd like to begin by recognizing the absolute horror of this crime and acknowledging the devastating loss that both the Rusek family as well as our family have faced. Our families have been irreparably broken by the needless deaths of Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico. This is something we will never get over. We will always mourn the loss of our family, and in that, we are united in our grief. I am still struggling to understand how and why this tragedy occurred. I may never be able to understand and accept it, but I pray for peace and healing for all of us. Now to my son, Christopher, I have known you since the day you were born into this world. I have watched you grow from a quiet and sweet, curious child who Bella reminded me so much of to a young man who worked hard in sports and later mechanics to achieve your goals. You are a good friend, brother, father, and son. You have, we have loved you from the beginning and we still love you now. This might be hard for some to understand how I can sit here under these circumstances and tell you although we are heartbroken, although we can't imagine what could have led us to this day, but we love you. Maybe you can't believe it either. As the Lord said in Jeremiah 3.31, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you and you as your mother, Chris, I have always loved you, and I still do. I hate what has happened. Your father and sister and I are struggling to understand why. But we will remain faithful as your family, just as God remains faithful because of his unconditional love for all, for us all. We love you, and we forgive you, son. Judge, if I could read Mr. Watts' statement. Yes. My name is Ronnie Watts, and I am the grandfather of Bella, Celeste, Nico Watts, and I am the father of Shannon. I am the father of Christopher Watts as well. And one of the most important things I've done in my life is to raise my children and to watch as they started their own families. I spent many years coaching Little League and talking to my son, taking him to the races, and sharing my love and knowledge of cars with him. He was just as involved with his girls. I believe he loves his girls. I know he does. This tragedy has impacted my family in so many ways. Beyond losing our precious grandchildren, our beloved daughter-in-law, we are forced to question everything we still don't have all the answers, and I hope one day, Christopher, you can help us. Chris, I want to talk to you as a father and son. You are here today accepting responsibility, but I want to tell you this now. I love you. Nothing will ever change that, and I want you to find peace, and today is your first step. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us. Chris, I forgive you and your sister forgives you and we will never abandon you and we love you. Dad. Judge, thank you for the opportunity to address the court. Thank you. 